this refers to any user defined name which provides user to initiate the definition so whenever a definition is created a new object of a particular definition type comes into existence and this is an example which we have seen in our default code when we wrote our hello tdl program we have types of definitions we have by categorized them as interface definitions data definitions formatting definitions integration definitions action definitions and system definitions interface definitions are definitions which are used in creating a user experience so something that a user can see on a screen and to uh, give a better graphical uh, output to the user are are termed under user interface definition the definitions in this category are menu report form part line field button and table data definitions are used for storing the data and the definitions in this category are objects variable and collection formatting definitions definitions which are used in formatting the user interface are referred as formatting definitions the definition in this category is border style and color integration definition integration definitions which makes the import of data available in various formats are referred to as integration definition we have import object and import file under this category action definition the action definition allows the user to define an action when a key combination is pressed it also associates an object on which the action is to be performed the key definition or the button definition falls in this category system definitions are viewed as being created by the administrator profile any items defined under system definitions are available globally across the application system definitions can be defined any number of times in tdl the items defined are appended to the existing list Yes, it is not necessary that you always append to one system definition list. As and when required, you can recall this list multiple times, and you can just create a new system definition and add your system uh, values. But the existing system definitions cannot be modified. under system definitions we have system variables system formulas system urls right so when we are going to use this we will be doing them in detail now these are the definitions so these are the main broad output of the definitions each definition has properties has its own set of properties which is referred to as attributes again there is a predefined set of attributes provided by the platform for each definition type the attribute specifies the behavior of a definition how would a report look how many forms would a report contain how many parts will a form contain all this will be a part of the attribute a definition can have multiple attributes associated with it each attribute has a name that's a predefined 
and an assigned value that is can be provided by the programmer. A value can either directly be associated to a given attribute or through some symbols or prefixes which we will be seeing very shortly. Apart from a direct value association of the attribute, there are ways to associate alternate values based on certain conditions prevailing to the runtime ex runtime values. So syntax is very simple. Under the definition type and the definition name, we have attribute name again control space bar to get the list of attributes under the definition type colon separated by a colon by its variable value. This value can be a constant or a formula and we have seen an example of this. Classification of attributes. The classification of an attribute is done on the basis of the number of values it accepts and if they are and if they can be specified multiple times under a definition based on the number of sub attributes and the number of values. Okay, there are seven types of attribute uh, types of attribute categories specified. Single and single list. A single type attribute accepts only one value and can't be specified multiple times. The attributes such as such as width, style are of single type. A single list type attribute accepts one value and can be specified multiple times. These attributes also accepts a comma separated list. For example, field attribute at line definition. Then we have dual and dual list. Dual type attribute accepts two values and cannot be specified multiple times in the same definition. For example, a repeat attribute at part level can be specified only once and takes two parameters, uh, that is the line name and the collection name. Do not worry and stre uh, stress on the examples much because as and when we will use, we, you will understand what is a dual and a dual list and what is a what are the how we have categorized them a dual list type attribute accepts two values and can be specified multiple times for example a set attribute at report level takes two parameters the variable name and the variable value and the set attribute can be used multiple times triple and triple list triple type accepts three values example uh, object attribute at part level, co uh, object, colon, ledger entries, colon first and colon other value, a condition that can be specified only once. A triple list at type attribute accepts three values and can be specified multiple times. Example switch. It's a it's an attribute modifier and can be used across all the definition types. Switch colon the label of the case colon the uh, definition name colon the condition and this can be specified multiple times. And there is a peculiar attribute type menu item. The attribute type menu item allows the user to add a menu item in the given menu definition. However, depending upon uh, what you are specifying, it keeps changing the uh, number of elements in the menu item and we'll see uh, as and when we write TDM how it keeps varying. So shall we write one more 